Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I hope you like the new layout. I have it this way because I have two guests on today, which I'm so excited about. You might remember my guest from last summer who came here to tell us about the wonderful world of hot wifing. She ended up being one of my most watched interviews ever, and I'm so excited to have her back with her husband this time. Welcome, Holly Hotwife and Vincent Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Good. I am so I am very I'm very excited to have you guys on, but I'm also very excited about like the couch situation mm -hmm. and the cards <laughs> here. I feel I feel like Oprah. I really <laughs> everybody gets a card. The podcast is evolving. <laughs> so um let's just like kind of go back in case. I have some listeners here who didn't watch your episode, which shame on you, you really should. Um, so, Holly, maybe you can introduce us to what hot wifing is. And then, Vincent, you can kind of explain, like, your role in the whole. Case. Absolutely. So, hot wifing is um, whenever a married couple, um, they like to kind of be dabble in, like, the hedonistic sort of ways. Um, the husband allows or um, encourages the wife to go out and have naughty fun and have sex with other men, women sometimes, mostly men, and um, then come back and tell him all about it. And it usually sparks something in him where it brings us closer as a couple. And, uh, you know, it turns him on, turns me on. So, And then, Vincent, tell me a little bit about your role here. Usually I'm the one coming up with the crazy ideas and dares and sitting in my office twiddling my thumbs, coming up with great ideas and texting her and seeing what she'll latch on to. <laughs> was it – you didn't have the pizza boy idea, right? That just was, happened just naturally. Happened. Well, it was like my audience on the camming. Yeah, were... because she was li live streaming on My Free Cams that time. And the fans or the room had suggested it. Right. That was the biggest thing back then. And it was actually the hottest thing I'd ever seen and was kind of my, you know, taboo thing. So when they – I was there with her when that happened, actually both times. Yeah. He was, um, he was hiding in the garage. <laughs> oh, yeah. really? You can so actually <laughs> see me if you find the video – if, if you can find the full-length video, you can see me setting up the camera and scurrying off. <laughs> <laughs> so for, again, for those who didn't listen to the first episode, can we just briefly sure. talk about the Pizza Boy incident? So I was, it was like my second time on uh, doing webcam on my free cams, and um, my audience was just like begging for me to like do like a topless delivery day or something like that. And um, I was encouraging them to like um make a yellow wall which if you know camming that's you know pay me pay me pay me and they did and i just got really into like hearing the jingles of the yellow wall and i was like i'm just gonna do it nude so then pizza guy came and uh, i answered the door nude and then um i invited him in still live streaming yeah by still the live way. streaming i invited him in with and vincent I in was the like, garage yeah with vincent in the garage and um, I was like, you know, because back then you had to like sign a, a, a receipt, you know, and tip uh -huh. them and everything. So I like carried the pizza. I was like, oh, can you bring the receipt in here? I'll set it down, you know, to write on the table. And um, I was naked the entire time. And then so I signed it. And I was like, he was like, what are you doing in here? Because, you know, I had like the whole setup, like the webcaming setup. Mm -hmm. And so I told him and I was like, you want to have some fun? And <laughs> he was like, yeah. Um, back then, I did not know that you could not have other people on, like, on the stream. Um, so we just started, you know, having a little bit of fun. And, uh, I mean, it, it Next thing up, you know, he's trying to keep a Magnum condom yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Did he not fit into the Magnum no. condom? Oh, no. But no. it was the only kind it you had the only, yeah, there. Yeah, the only because somebody else in this room fits into the Magnum condom. <laughs> yes. I got it. I got it. Th yeah. Thank you for that plug. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it just ended up having, you know, a great fun night of doing that. And then I kind of get in trouble with my free cams, but they were like, it's okay, but never do that again. Mm -hmm. um, and then like a year down the road, we moved into another house, still, still kind of in the same area. In the same city, but the, across town. Yeah. And I ordered a pizza again and it was that same guy. And I did not recognize him at first. 
but he recognized me. I bet he did. <laughs> and so I invited him in again so that we could like relive a little moment in history. Wow. So, and I did recently find that video. Yeah. And he was he was upstairs. <laughs> I like, was watching. The, yeah, from upstairs. Having no clue, I just said, fuck it, let's set up a camera, yeah. call a pizza in. We're probably drunk on a uh, Sunday night. I after... normally do top of stairs anyway, yeah. just for like our fun. You right, know? right. So. She, uh, her answering the door for DoorDash or a pizza fully clothed is very rare anyway. Yeah. Not even for fun. <laughs> just, I'm just naked. Just normal, yeah. <laughs> so... They, uh, we had no clue it was going to be, I think we did order from the same place because yeah. we liked their antipasta. Stefano's. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, shameless plug for Stefano's. <laughs> um, and it, w- it was completely unexpected though. And next thing you know, I am freaking out, setting up cameras because I heard her go, oh my God, it's you. And he said, Holly. <laughs> and, uh, actually it, it was Tiana back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tiana. Yeah. Um, it, it just kind of all fell into place, and you know, as it's happening, I'm. We have a hat, the old house, big, double landing stairway, and I'm up in the on the landing, kind of hiding in the shadows, <laughs> trying to sneak a camera over the railing to catch it. It's dark in there. I think we like fucked on the stairs. You did too, like this hard. He, he hard bent you over stairs. from behind, yeah. and then uh, you straddled him, went to town, yeah. and. There was some funny conversation afterwards. She's like, okay, I felt bad bye. because I didn't recognize him. You know, right. like, I, I fucked him, and it's I okay. didn't recognize him. Okay. I feel like you made up <laughs> for Yeah, he gets I'm recognized like, everywhere like, he goes. Yeah. <laughs> so did he ever know that Vincent was there? Uh-uh. No. Wow. No, well, I'm ne- sure, neither time. I'm sure he has since seen the video. Oh, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and recognized the scenario. I'm sure he picked that episode yeah. apart. It would have been great if you just walked in afterwards and, I mean, you know, scared hey, the living up? shit yeah. out of him. As many times as it's crossed my mind in certain situations like that, I'm just going to let a good thing keep going and yeah. not get in the way and scare some dude out of a condom that he can't fit into already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, let's go back sort of to the beginning. So we got Holly's story on, you know, how she met you and the place that she was in at the time and how you made such a big difference in her life. Tell us about your side of the story. How did you meet Holly? What was your first impression? How did you guys progress to where you're at now? I had a first impression long before I met her, actually. Um, she, I had, we all kind of hang out and uh, we're all in the same area. We all live around the same lake. And it's kind of a small little party town. Everybody you know, knows one another. I'd never met her before, um, but I'd seen her on Facebook. And in fact, there's a saved photo of her in a sheer dress at Sunday Fun Day with some of her friends that was saved in my iCloud. Mm. And one day we're sitting there going through photos, and it's six months prior to her and I ever even meeting. And I was said, oh, looky here. In my iCloud is a saved photo of you from before we ever even met. So it was kind of fun having proof that I was already a... Smitten. Yeah, already smitten. <laughs> So we, uh, I was out at Taco Tuesday on the lake. Everybody hops in the boats and goes from bar to bar and does ta- or uses tacos as an, as an excuse to drink on a Tuesday. Yeah. Um, some of our mutual friends um, asked if I'd take them over to the other bar, um, and they mentioned that Holly was going to be there, and I gladly obliged and said absolutely. Um, had one of the, the guys' wives trying to fuck my leg the entire time over there. Shout out to Marka. <laughs> um, She's going to hate you for that. She already hates you. Um, so uh, we get over there, and I'm just blown away. And I had also, I was recently out of an engagement and pretty beat up over that, um, but just madly in love with Holly. And But I had just recently read a book, um, and it explained the the dynamics of, of men and women and it helped me understand how any man that just falls face first for a woman is ultimately going to end up turning that woman off and drive her away. Hmm. And I read, you know, I studied the dynamics of that and realized that if I just introduce myself, make a very quick impression and walk out of here, I probably have a better chance of seeing her again. Mm -hmm. And against every fiber of my being, I closed my tab after 10 minutes, said a quick goodbye and left. 
I think I cried the whole way home, too. <laughs> Knowing damn well that she was going home with that other couple, too. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. So I, you I, were already, like, kind of swinging. Um, yeah, I didn't exactly know what it was. Mm-hmm. I was just fucking my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, she I was, didn't know there was I a made term myself, for it. Yeah, I made myself be single for a year because I had always been in relationships. Mm-hmm. None of them went well. So yeah. um, that was that was during my, um, I don't want to say celibate time, but my single year mm-hmm. is whenever I met him. And uh, yeah. Far he, from celibate. Yeah. yeah, far from celibate. I was going home with that other couple to, you know, go have some fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's how... That was our first uh, face-to-face, and then um, I was in the manufacturing business, and she was in the tax credit business. She hit me up on LinkedIn, and we chit-chatted a couple times. It was like six months later. Yeah, we chit-chatted a little. I think it quickly... Actually, did it... How fast did we move into going Um, on a date? It was just like two weeks that we were on that messaging thing for the poker run. And I uh, invited her to a, a... a boat poker run with me as my date um, since she lives nearby and knows most of the people there. Um, you know, we'd never hung out for more than 15 minutes, but I invited her on a four day event. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, she agreed to go with some caveats. And that main caveat was when we get to the hotel, you have to make out with me in front of the hotel. And if there's a spark, I'll stay. And if there's not, I'm turning around. Wow. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I was serious about this, like, one year That was year eight years and two thing, months ago. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm assuming it worked. So it what works. we're saying is I'm a great kisser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is. And he's very charming. <laughs> so, okay, so you guys, obviously, you know, the sparks are there. Mm-hmm. How yep. did you know that this was something that extended beyond just sex? Well, that first date night, um, we were sharing, I, since it's a four-day boat party, you kind of get your your crew that's on your boat. Um, There was another couple that was with us that I'd never really hung out with before, but I think she was a cam model, Mm -hmm. um, and he's a wild party guy. Um, We were sharing a a big hotel room with them, and... They were super cool. Yeah, great people. Um, I knew they were swingers. Um, I'd been in and out of the lifestyle, um, you know, for many years. But somehow, after partying for a while next thing you know we're all in bed together having a foursome mm. they were a lot of fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> we they had were. it was like the first time that i had ever um had fun with like toys and people like we had like masks on like horse heads and like roosters everybody, everybody was having a blast yeah we were just wow. like yeah and it wasn't like a sex there, fuel there might night have been some it like ended involved. up I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> actually no that i i had i never oh, yeah. drugs. Okay. yeah i mean as a teenager yes but yeah no. you're right, you're right. we were just having just fun you mm-hmm. know and i was just sober being goofy. i was sober yeah, back you were then sober. Yeah, that's why I was like, actually, no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were just having like silly, goofy fun, and then it just like turned into sex, and yeah, it was, it was amazing. Sorry. And stop. the next morning, <laughs> her question was, "If we get together and start dating, is this something we can do more often?" And I told her, "Welcome to the lifestyle." Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, works. we're now dating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow, that's amazing. So. Now, explain to us a little bit about hot wifing and how is that different than the lifestyle or is that a part of the lifestyle? Like, does the lifestyle encompass like different? I think it's a separate ways? theme park within the same okay. facility. Right. Yeah. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah. It's like California Adventure Land and <laughs> exactly. Disneyland. Exactly. Right. Right. That I think so. Hot wifing, outside of its generic term, is really. A, an experience that both the husband and wife get to enjoy separately, but end up together. Right. And, and for us, it's it's so hot for me to see her, you know, like the hottest thing ever is for her to just take home a random stranger, bang him, and, you know, make his year. And she has a blast doing it. It's not just for me. It's also for her. And... She comes home that night and tells me all about it or shows me pictures or, you know, shows me a video. And we get to experience, re-experience it together. And then as a result of that, we are so infinitely sexually charged that we're able to, you know, roll into the best sex of, of the week. 
-hmm. And it's just such a an adrenaline fueled scenario that has so many so many peaks to it that you know from the moment she leaves the house, you know you're just you're nervous, you're energized, you're excited, you have every thought and idea going through your mind. If you're comfortable with it, if you're yeah. not comfortable, you're you know crying in a closet. <laughs> but because of her and I, then it's just called cheating. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> right. exactly. <laughs> yeah. that's just that's just cheating. So. Because of our communication and the way our relationship began and continued to grow, there's so much communication, comfort, and and uh, trust that anything and everything can be fun. And we never, you know, put ourselves in a situation that it can go wrong. Um, I couldn't imagine that ever happening. But it's emotional maturity, I think, you know. It, but and because we have that trust, we're able to experience. You know, we really don't have where every couple in lifestyle has their boundaries and those are necessary. Ours are fairly limited, which because of that, and we're able to safely have very unlimited boundaries. We can experience a lot of things that a lot of others probably can't in that arena. Mm. So can you explain that a little bit more? Like you say safely, like, so what, what, what constitutes like, safely engaging like without kind of getting into some kind of um, putting ourselves into a corner that could create an argument yeah or something that might bother me or you know uh, m the biggest issue in that lifestyle is jealousy mm. where i am probably the least jealous man alive and i think that's what it kind of allows a lot of this and she has that as well Anything that could create jealousy, when I say I don't have that in my being, it's there somewhere. Mm -hmm. We don't want to find it, though. It's. Mm -hmm. I think jealousy, too, can be um, a good thing within a healthy marriage, and it can also be a bad thing within an unhealthy marriage, mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on who you're married to, you know, and what kind of um, – bond y'all have together yeah. so i think jealousy is a good thing to have but there's no drama created off of it other than excitement you know that it's a it's a good jealousy it's not like a, a bad jealousy you know so Does that make any sense if holly is always aware of something that could potentially make me jealous she's going to avoid that yeah. mm -hmm. um so never step into the gray areas so because of our communication and understanding each other's minds so much we're able to avoid that i know what not to do to ever put her into a danger zone and as does she with me. Mm -hmm. What what could she do to make you jealous, do you think? That's a damn good question, Holly. <laughs> you haven't <laughs> figured that out yet? <laughs> it, it, it's a respect thing. Oh, we do have, um, like, I don't sleep over at any yeah. like, guy's house or bed. We have a no sleepover rule. When, whenever there's emotions, he want a guy to like wake up to like what he gets to wake up to. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> we keep some things sacred. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's one of them. I you know only I get to hear her fart in her sleep. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's for me, not for you. <laughs> Which of course doesn't actually. Oh no, yeah, no. Just, she's oh, a just perfect kidding. specimen. Just kidding. Just kidding. Nut would never. <laughs> so, but there's there's little tidbits like that. There's. I think the uh, when there's ever emotions involved, like th this is just sex. That's it. Yeah. This is a physical thing, not a not an emotional scenario. So as long as we avoid any of that, I um, mean, there's things I can do with other women that will just piss Holly off, yeah. and there's things she can do <laughs> that get me that can not piss me off, but get me into the jealous zone, mm -hmm. and that's what we try to avoid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back and talk about so much more. So stick around. And we around. have a pizza on the way. <laughs> we have a pizza on the way. Mm, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Extra sausage, I hope. <laughs> we'll see you guys in a minute. We all know Adam and Eve is the one-stop shop for everything sexy. And now, with my code HOLLY, you can get any one item for 50% off, plus 10 free gifts. And you'll even get free shipping. So spice up your sex life at adamandeve.com, but only if you use code Holly. All right, guys, we are back. So Vincent, I want to dive into your head a little bit more. Let's go. Because 
you know, from our last episode with just Holly, there was so many comments from men who were just like, how could this be possible? How could this be a healthy relationship? How could you as a man allow your wife to sleep with other men? Like, you know, just there was a lot of confusion and actually a lot of anger. Like a lot of men get really angry Mm -hmm. about this idea of being able to like (laughs) share your wife with other men. So have you ever thought about why like this excites you? Absolutely. All the time. And of course I get the, uh, get asked that a lot. I try to relate it to as children, there's two types of boys. There's the boy that gets the brand new Schwinn badass BMX bicycle, and he wants to ride around in front of his kids, around in front of his friends, but none of them can touch it. That's my bike. Get the fuck off. And then there's the other type of kid that says, this is the coolest fucking thing ever. It's so much fun to ride. It jumps so much higher than everything else. Try it. Take it for a spin. It's amazing. Obviously, you know which one of those characters I am. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it is, is how can you let your friends fuck your wife? Well, how could I keep them from fucking my wife? She's fucking amazing. (laughs) She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. And she's perfectly comfortable and content with this. Why would I not? Mm -hmm. That's really the basics of it. Um, You know, that and I'm, you know, just a hedonist by nature Mm -hmm. and I've met my match Mm -hmm. and it just kind of you know beautifully fell into place so as far as the the mentality behind it back to the comfort thing and the trust and honesty it just makes itself available to be the perfect storm of you know sexual creativity Mm -hmm. do you think that there is a part of all men who maybe have the capability of having this mindset or engaging in this lifestyle, but they're being held back by this societal norm of you must own your wife. She belongs only to you. I mean, how many times have you heard you're not a real man? That the person that says that is typically the one that will actually enjoy it the most Mm -hmm. once they become comfortable with it, Mm -hmm. because it is such a strong feeling within their emotions that, it's obviously something that, you know, tickles them or bothers them. So I do think that that's the type of person that is is most engaging into that type of life because kind of like the BDSM scenario where the most powerful individuals are typically the most um, uh, affected by the BDSM and most interested the, the person that has, is completely jealous and has that ownership mentality to release that and experience the re- release of that, they're much more affected than the next guy. Mm-hmm. So there's no – I'm a firm believer that every married man on earth has jerked off thinking about his wife having sex with the gardener, his best friend, the you know guy at the gym. It's happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know Whether they did it on purpose or it just – came into their mind by a mistake um you know and with the with the age of porn and the direction of those categories that's pretty much all you get on Pornhub is you know somebody doing something taboo and anything taboo is is what creates that erotic mentality so you know there's that's what creates that sexual energy Mm mm-hmm I want to actually kind of refer back to a podcast episode that I just had a couple of weeks ago um, where this whole idea of sharing your wife with another man came up. And this is with Lena the Plug and Adam 22. Mm-hmm. So as a lot of people know, she ended up doing a scene with Jason Love, mm-hmm. which created all this controversy online. Well, of course. And, um, you know, she talked very openly about... And a shitload of traffic. A shitload <laughs> of traffic. Yes. And that, that, Number one selling video on OnlyFans of all time, yeah. apparently. Yep. Way to go, Adam and Lena. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Marketing geniuses. Yeah. Definitely. You can but say whatever you, yeah. else you want about them. Call you us. Can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first foursome on the yeah. uh, Plug Talk show, maybe? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Not against it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, you know, she talked about how it was, 
you know, a situation that I think they both had to navigate a little bit because, you know, obviously she has sex with other women and mm-hmm. Adam joins her and, and that there's that, but they'd never done it this way. But afterwards she, you know, admitted she was kind of surprised, like it spiced up their sex life. Like they had more sex afterwards he was turned on by it, which I think they weren't sure if that's how they were going to feel about right. it, which was really interesting. I dove into his reactions and got very interested in how he was going to take it and, you know, because of all of the online berating and, of course, the comments, he took it very well. And you could understand that he was being very honest with himself and his fan base mm-hmm. about that that aspect. And rather than, you know, coming up with excuses and fending off the fire, you know, he he owned it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's real. And it, it kind of – it was a relief for me to see that, for, to see somebody with, with that much following, you know, embrace it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it'll open up, you know, a lot of people's minds. And you know, rather than again making up excuses, you know, mm-hmm. he owned it. And when you own that shit, you know, people understand it. It's a genuine reaction. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because I think, you know, on this show, we've we've talked a lot about women and the, um, you know, societal expectations on women and stuff. But like, men have it really hard too. Yeah. You know, I mean, you guys are taught from a young age in many cases you don't boys don't cry you don't show weakness you know you have to always be the strong one it's 2023 we, we wear dresses now. <laughs> <laughs> and you look damn <laughs> um so i mean what's your idea of masculinity I'm from Texas, so that's going to be a, a tough lot of one to swallow. Cows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I live in rural Texas and have an armory. Um, it's going to conflict with a lot of people. It, my definition of masculinity is extremely toxic. <laughs> uh, I've never had anybody ask me that though. Um, definition, I, I think that's a varying scenario from character to character um and in relationships um it depends on the dynamic of them as males you know individually a little bit different and i don't want to end up getting canceled by saying something <laughs> very texasy um so don't lure me into this shit. <laughs> yeah i wake up every day of my life expect waiting to get canceled right. so yeah, fair I enough. Hear you. yeah fair enough um yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, I drive a dually and race boats and cars and mm-hmm. shoot guns. Minus yeah. materialistic <laughs> things, what would you what would you think? Of I guess masculine? like maybe a better question is what is your idea of like a well balanced man? Yeah. Oh, Do you okay. know what I mean? Uh, I well, and, and that's changed over the last you know ten or twenty years. I think uh, a male being emotionally aware is something that's new. Mm -hmm. And although some people are taking a little too fucking far, um, it's something that I've taught myself over the last few years, especially being with Holly. Um, I've learned to embrace my emotions and that it's not a bad thing. And as a man, we don't have to, you know, my father is never shown an emotion in his life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if he did, it's, you know, something bad happened. Mm-hmm. And I was raised in that kind of household. So to to kind of go the other direction and share all of my emotions and feelings with not just Holly, but some of my best friends. I have, you know, friends that I've met over the last 10 years that I never would have said hey to in a grocery store that I share my emotions with. And, you know, I've got best friends I say I love you to all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you saw me at the grocery store, you'd probably never expect that. Mm-hmm. But I do have that. So. That um, I don't know if that answers your question. Or not. He, he's uh, he's kind of like a Dr. Phil to a lot of his friends because he's so emotionally aware um, of feelings and um, and how hard men do have it. You know, mm-hmm. they become alone. They feel lonely and they feel like um, I'm a woman speaking for a man right now, but only because I've seen it. You know, um, a lot of his friends, they turn to him for advice Um Whenever they just feel like, you know, they don't have it anywhere. They can't turn to anyone, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's. I forget about that. I'll go on the patio and she'll say, are you good about to go Dr. Yeah. Phil? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll grab a, a beer and go sit on the patio. And two hours later, I come back in and I'm probably crying at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you, Talking a friend off the ledge. I mean, do you think that your ability to 
openly communicate like that comes from this lifestyle and Absolutely. you to kind of I mean in order to have a healthy relationship and have this open relationship that you guys have to communicate to make sure that no boundaries are crossed. Do you think it comes from that? So much yeah. comes from that. With yes. because of I get phone calls not weekly but at least monthly from the most unexpected individuals that find out who we are or know who we are and want to confess their feelings, discuss their uh, eccentricities. And because they see, you know, somebody that might have hung out with us at a barbecue and they recognize Holly and I's dynamic. And then once they factor in the, the sexual aspect, they see what we've become and see what we are and, you know, 80% of the married people out there, are, you know, bickering at each other all the time and, you know, trying to get away from one another where, you know, when she's out of town, I'm, you know, laying on the floor crying, sucking my thumb, waiting for her to get back. <laughs> and we've created this, this team together and without, yes, yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. That, that's what they recognize. Um, you know, and the same with women, um, you know, I'll look over and there will be some you know, girl at brunch just, you know, staring at me, you know, you know it's not because I'm that attractive. She just loves our dynamic and sees how much I love my wife and sees how much my wife loves me and how much respect we have for one another. And that's, you know, that's that dynamic. What advice would you give to maybe, so Vincent, let me ask you, what advice would you give to a guy who maybe wanted to suggest this lifestyle to his significant other call me <laughs> um approach it from her perspective not yours and be very very honest don't try to skirt around and fake her into something it's something you want to reveal and expose your thoughts not coerce know. Exactly. Be, be uh, vulnerable. Create that vulnerability. Yeah. Your spouse will always recognize vulnerability. Vulnerability creates trust. Utilize that to your and y'all's advantage. Mm. And then, Holly, what about you? If there was probably a little, I feel like it's a little bit easier for the women. Actually, it maybe is. not. I, I, for I the woman like to I, convince the man. I feel uh, definitely. That yes. she wants to sleep with other men, though? Def I could be wrong about that. Other women. One thing. Other men, I don't know. Yeah. No, you're right. Every you dude wants to it. see his wife with another woman. Yeah. Yes. Not every woman wants to see her husband with another woman. Mm -hmm. So you start there and you have to pair out. I, I'd say just talk about your fantasies, you know, communicate. And if there's, um, if the guy can be, if the husband can be vulnerable with his wife and, and if they can really open up to each other, it, I think it um, kind of just transitions into kind of a fluid um relationship you know and mm -hmm. and what y'all are wanting to experience together and what you're comfortable with i mean i i'm all or i'm opposed to putting pressure on your significant other you know mm -hmm. there's no pressure it shouldn't be like that it should be a very fluid process you know mm -hmm. about just talking and and fantasizing with your with your spouse so mm -hmm. um I don't know if that's if that's a good answer or not. Yeah, no, don't no, don't no. hide things from your significant yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, just you know, be communicate and be yeah. honest. I mean, I think I, and what start I, small. Yeah, yeah. Don't go. Don't go magnum. Yeah. <laughs> don't go magnum. <laughs> yeah. Start off. Start off with a teeny little pizza, yeah. pizza guy. Go from there. <laughs> start with the pizza van. <laughs> I mean, what I hear both of you guys kind of circling back to again and again is this sense of trust. Yeah. Right. And another comment that I see come up a lot is how can you not be afraid that Holly's going to leave you for another man? Does that ever occur to you? Do you I'm ever have that concern? I'm five foot seven. It occurs to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> of course it but does. But you wear a magnum condom, yeah. <laughs> so can we add those inches to the yeah. height? I feel like it counts. It makes being a tripod a little easier. <laughs> I, I, I think because I understand her mind so much because she lets me and fills me in. Uh, I really don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I'll have the, 
you know, oh, no, I don't want that to go any further scenario. But I never, ever, th- it never crosses my mind, oh, God, she's going to run off with so-and-so. I'm not mm-hmm. emotionally capable to have, like, a, a fling or a boyfriend or another husband or, you know, like, I have I have everything I want here. There is um, that. We've been through so much together. Yeah. And I think that's what created us. Yeah. And for either of us to have to repeat that is just yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't it doesn't even make sense in our minds. Mm-hmm. No. I can't imagine starting all over and you know laying out all my baggage with someone she else. She has gone home with some of some high profile celebrities that women would kill their husbands for. Mm-hmm. And it's never crossed my mind that mm-hmm. she's not coming home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he, like, he fills all the all the needs and, yeah. and all that stuff. So. I will say, I mean, for, so personally, from my perspective as a woman, you know, finding a man that you feel safe with and that you feel connected to and and all of those things, I think, is just so valuable. Like, so valuable. you don't throw that away, especially if, you know, you get to experience sex with other people. And so it fulfills yeah. whatever need that you might have to have a bit of variety coming back to like right. that solid I, home I, that, that makes that sense brings up a good point too is i think a lot of our um sexual things that we do they're very physical based they're mm-hmm. not emotional based they're not um you know relationship based it's it's our physical fun that we you know generate with each other and we're like let's go do this you mm-hmm. know um so it does it never really goes toward um a route of, you know, going to have a relationship with someone else, you know? Yeah. It's, it's that wouldn't even be fun to me, yeah. you know? I mean, it's so. interesting to, so I'm, um, I'm in a monogamous relationship and that's just what works for us. But obviously I have tons of people on who are in, you know, polyamorous relationships who swing all that kind of stuff. And, um, it's just so interesting how like a lot of it runs the gamut. So you two are like definitely a couple, like it's the two of you yeah. together, you have sex with other That's people, what makes it fun. but it's really right. the two of you. But then there's other couples that are literally like throuples mm-hmm. or, you know, they have multiple partners that aren't just sex yeah, I don't, and I that works for that. them too. <laughs> so it's just like so interesting to see, you know, how all these different people, you know, can have fulfilling relationships. And you just think back to not even back to, I mean, it still exists to this day, how, you know, we very much push like the, one man, one woman, right. you only have sex with each other for the rest of your lives. And again, this is coming from somebody who's in a monogamous relationship and that works for us. But right. I just think it's really nice that people can start to be open and explore other alternatives, which is why it's so nice to have you guys on and, and talk about that other lifestyle. Thanks. You know, that felt like a really good end to the podcast, but I actually have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. I should have saved that to the last. Let's go. <laughs> now, Holly, when you were on the last time Mm -hmm. you were very specific about like saying that Vincent is not a cuck. Right. So can you tell us the difference between he's a stag, right? Right. So can you tell us the difference between what a cuck is and what a stag is? So a cuck I think has, um, kind of, a um, demeaning or derogatory. I don't want to, that sounds bad. That's not what I mean. Um, a cuck is like the dynamic that the man and woman have in that, type of relationship is there's a term that we never can remember yeah, for it no um more of a controlling scenario control um like i'm gonna have to just use examples because i don't know the words for it but say the husband is at home and the wife is like i'm going out to do whatever the fuck i want mm-hmm. i'm gonna go have sex with whoever i want you're gonna wait until i come back and you might get to fuck me you might not it's That's like a different kind of, it's, it's like kind more of a power. power exchange. Yeah. Where it feels like you guys don't really have that. Right. Yeah. You're like, equal. so a stag would be, yeah, kind of an equal ground. Let's have fun together in this and let's, you know, um, like we kind of bounce ideas off of each other instead of there's no power dynamic. Mm-hmm. I picture the cuckold as he's got a cock cage on sitting in the corner, sucking his thumb with a mask on. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that, and some guys love that. And yeah, some women love that, but that's mm-hmm. not ours. Whatever yeah. tickles that, it, that couple's fancy, but that's yeah. just not us. We're, it's, we're it's, sexually charged together. Whereas yeah. the, the cuck would be sexually charged by the woman saying, I'm going to go and do whatever I want sexual yeah. wise. You know? This is actually like an interesting, it would be interesting to have. So I had Venus cuckoldress on and she's, 
you know, very into the cuck lifestyle and she actually has a whole one. podcast mm-hmm. about it. And she described how it kind of runs the gamut. Right. Um, so it'd be interesting to have her, because I think she had a good definition about what that was. Mm-hmm. And of course, it escapes me now. I know. It's, I, I've read about it. You know, I, I don't really discuss it a whole lot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to have the words to pinpoint it if you're not in that dynamic. You know, mm-hmm. we can talk about our stuff all day long, but because I'm, I'm not in it, I, I don't know. Yeah. How do you feel um, when you see comments about like people putting Vincent down for, you know, your lifestyle? Do you get I, defensive or are you just like at this I mean, point I you're like. I kind of used to, but yeah, yeah now I, it's not. You don't really like talk back in the comments, you know, like everybody has you don't their even read them. I mean, sometimes I, don't I do, <laughs> sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, yeah. you know, just if I feel like going through them, I will, but I know everybody just doesn't understand, um, what we have and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I feel like I want to stick up for him and I might, it, and there's no rhyme or reason, you know? It's, I might do it in the moment and then I might not, Mm -hmm. like I have in the past. And sometimes I'm like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Right. So it's not on my to-do list is to go down each comment and go, you don't understand about this. You know, take an enormous amount It would, it would. So, but coming on podcasts and stuff and talking about it and answering any questions that people may have, that's, that's how you educate, you know? That's true. That's true. Vincent, what about you? I look at it like I explain it. As some people's taste buds love cilantro, some people's taste buds think it tastes like soap. Just because what we have and what we do doesn't taste right to you Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that what we're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. Again, it's 2023. Open up your mind and have fun. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, whether it's religion or society or whatever the scenario might be. That that's not a factor. It's you're a couple. You're together, whether you're married or not. Doesn't matter. You live your life and have fun. Uh, as as for the comments, you know, go fuck yourself. <laughs> There's always going to be comments. There's always you know? comments. It's it's the internet. People have especially, nothing. Especially especially on YouTube or yeah. TikTok. Those yeah. are the worst. People have nothing to do but. Comment. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you felt the need to, to put use your keyboard, but yeah. you know, great. I thank you for proclaiming you know y- your sensitivities. Right. But on the flip side, while there might be a hundred really shitty comments, there's five just endearing ones that make your day. Mm-hmm. And and it's not like we need cheerleaders or anything. Yeah. We're yeah. still going to do what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And also too, like if you think about it, only I don't know, maybe like less than 1% of people actually comment. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of think about all the people who watch it and then listen to your story and then go, hmm. Yeah. You know, like maybe this is something, Mm -hmm. maybe I can look at things differently. I didn't know that that was the percentage. That's crazy. I'm making that up out of my head, (laughs) but I can tell you it's something like that. Like in Holly's infinite research on on (laughs) analytics, just just that that, that is the calculation. Just throwing it out there. But I mean, think about it. Look at like a video, look at how many views it has and Mm -hmm. look how many comments it has and like compare it. It's most people aren't going to be bothered to comment. You know what I mean? And like kind of like you said earlier, the ones that do comment, you know, something negative or derogatory. Or they something. had a bad day. <laughs> the, sure. Or they, I don't know, they just don't understand and they, they're they the sensitive to the subject for some reason, you mm-hmm. know. So it might push their buttons because, you know, maybe it, it hit it hit some buttons, you know. The, I mean, that's a good point. I find that the people who get the most angry about it, mm-hmm. there's some deep underlying trauma, yeah. trauma situation, confusion, yeah. shame yeah. that creates, that provokes that kind of reaction. Because otherwise, like, why wouldn't you just be like, wow, that's weird, not yeah. even, don't care. Scroll just scroll along. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, you got to get in there and be like, you are going to hell. Right. She's going to leave you. And that's literally what the comments sound like. There are people that will spend money to subscribe to our OnlyFans to go into our DMs to berate us yeah. all day. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, I find that, that, like, when people pay money, they're really nice to you. But on the free platforms, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's when they're just like, I yeah. can just Everybody's spew all my fan. hatred. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> If you paid money, you're a fan. <laughs> so does it ever reverse? Do you ever go and sleep with other women and then Holly like kind of hangs out and then waits for you to come home and you tell her about it? I do sleep with other women. I don't 
I'm no, sure it's happened like where, that. yeah, I, I don't venture out and, hey, honey, I'm going on a date. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go bang so-and-so. I'm not a hot, why, uh, hey, I'm not a hot husband. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'm not a hot husband. Well, no, you're the. Yeah. Yeah, Either you're way. right. Hot husband. Yeah, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't want him to, like, go out on a date. She, and then, for me and to have back. sex with another woman, it's almost pointless for me to do it without her present. Yeah, mm-hmm. we like group play if. I like you know th- I'm not three saying that he play. can't. It just doesn't happen often. I've seen her have the most memorable orgasm of my life, watching me have sex with another woman and not even touching herself. Yeah, and I wasn't mm-hmm. even touching them. I'm just oh, wow. sitting back on the couch watching. And had an orgasm, a hands-free orgasm, yeah. Bluetooth orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never, and it's never happened since. Interesting. Yeah. It God, was so God, hot. God bless. She was a redhead, so. <laughs> yeah. God bless tiny redhead lesbians. Why do you Shout think out that, to Katie. Why do you think that was? <laughs> um, you know, I don't really know. I haven't really thought about it. I was just so turned on. And I, I mean, I love watching him fuck other women. Mm-hmm. Um, it's normally in, in group play sessions. But I, we really like the, the girl that he was with. And. Just I don't know. They're hot. He's look at him. He's hot, <laughs> and she's hot. You so. know, um, not to make this about me, but this points to like a story that I have. So I've only done had a threesome twice, um, and both of them were very very long time ago. But the first time was um, in the red light district with my boyfriend at the time, mm-hmm. and we went and saw a sex worker. And um, she wasn't really that into me. And I'd never been with a woman before, by the way. So after a time, I was like, she's clearly not. Into the dude. Yeah. yeah she's like into my husband and she, husband, boyfriend. And so I like kind of sat back and I just watched him have sex with her. And it was totally it's a turn on. Porn. It was a turn on for me because it was like for me, I don't know, seeing, you know, obviously I found him attractive and seeing him, you know, like all that masculinity that I was attracted to seeing it like from a a different perspective, like all of it, Mm -hmm. like giving it to another woman, I was like turned on by it. And that totally surprised me. And we, um, talked about it afterwards, you know, when we were in Europe, like this sounds, this is fun. Maybe we can go home. And we kind of had this fantasy about me sleeping with his friends and it felt you know, very exciting and accessible when we were in another country. Right. And then the minute we came back to America, like, okay, it back was to weird. vanilla life. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just like, and I think, I think about that a lot because I think about how it was, you know, once we were back in our regular life and all the societal norms that, you know, we mm-hmm. were inbred in us and we were used to came back into play. Some things need to remain in Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like that once we took the fantasy mm-hmm. aspect away and it was, I think it was just too scary right. to do that because, yeah. like, what would his friends think? There's so think? much judgment like, in here. Exactly. In the like, States, so much of you that. Know? Yeah, there's so much judgment. Um, you don't feel comfortable expressing those desires and wants and needs here. It just, you know, Europe is so different. I mean, I've never been, but that's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, imagine what you guys are experiencing out here. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're headed there soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's going to be... We're just practicing. Yeah. <laughs> we're just practicing right now. So I guess my advice is for anyone who's interested in, you know, branching out and having a threesome, go to Europe. Yeah. Yep. You're going to love it. You'll feel comfortable. Or call us. Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys... Have you guys ever, like, considered, I don't know, doing some kind of advice column or... Do you do you offer anything like that to people? Uh, he, like I said, he does that all the yeah, time. Every night on friends. my patio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like people who don't know you, you know what I mean? Like people um, who watch this podcast, like like if they joined your OnlyFans, mm-hmm. would they be able to? There's post a some lot questions? of that actually, in our DMs. Yeah. There's a lot of that in our DMs. And actually, I do that on my lives. On OnlyFans yeah, her a lot. her lives. Yeah. Do get a lot of revealing questions and a lot of I don't, don't want to say troubled people but they're in a a live forum as an anonymous individual and they'll ask things that they never would ask anyone else Mm -hmm. and it does kind of turn in when she does q and a's it 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 leans itself into that direction quite a bit we've never of course it's been discussed before but we've never actually thought about platforming that um though it is you know definitely doable and helpful i mean we get so much feedback that what y'all do changed our life Mm -hmm. whether it was you know the videos or just seeing what we do or just following our twitter and you know 
using that as an example for escapades, you know, it's I feel like we would need to do like a, a lot more research and like, cause we're not, you're right. We should go do more research. <laughs> Let's go do more research. I love how like, yeah, you guys have completely different ideas yeah, about what that yeah. means. You know, tonight we're doing R and D. But to have an, like an official advice column, I think we would definitely need to take some Our courses Our plates or are something. so fucking full yeah, as is. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I hear you, though, like, because there's a lot of psychology behind it. Yeah, and, and I, I think, don't want to give bad advice. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it seems to me that you guys both came to the table maybe without a ton of emotional shame and baggage. Maybe I'm wrong. But people who have that, I would imagine this would be tough for them yeah i don't think we had any shame or any baggage we were both both very sexually free and mm. wanting to still be free mm -hmm. even though we're in a i say monogamous because that's the only man that i want you know mm -hmm. but in the physical world we still want to have fun you know with other people mm -hmm. so yeah do you guys see yourselves doing this like into your 80s oh yeah Definitely. <laughs> I mean, if I'm still fucking by then, yeah. <laughs> Holly was we, we like, yes, about it and Vincent all the time. was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man, <laughs> that's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> I, I already take snack breaks during orgies. Yeah. <laughs> as long as we're physically capable, it's the, the older we get, the more mature we get, the more fun we have with it. And we joke about it all the time and look, that's us over there. You know, of course it's some fat dude with his dick hanging out, you know, cruising the beach. <laughs> but I mean, it, the thought of it sounds fun. We don't have any interest in stopping, yeah. you know, while we have monetized our life, it won't be for the money and we don't live our life for the money. Mm. We we're doing what we do and would be doing regardless of what we do for a living. I made a, a TikTok not too long ago, and I actually got this from Chris Hart. I'm going to give him um, some praise on that. But um, he said um, watching porn is like watching like stuntmen. Mm -hmm. And so I could consider myself like a stuntman because I'm doing all of those wild, crazy things that other people may not want to do or they're scared to do because it might be... Um, you know, too adventurous for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but emotionally or physically yeah. dangerous. And uh, I'm performing that for them so they don't have to. So, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting outlook. <laughs> Do you guys have anything on your bucket list that you haven't done that you want to someday? Or have you guys done it all? I just did a bucket list. What are you doing later? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny you mentioned that, Holly. You know, I was going to order some pizza <laughs> um, <laughs> and just see what happens. Yeah, there we go. <gasps> I don't know. Uh, we have, we you know, day by day. <laughs> yeah, we have destinations, of course. And I mean, we've, our bucket list, I mean, we have to rewrite it every fucking morning yeah. almost. Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, of course, there's people and celebrities and destinations, but I don't think that there's a we don't roll off a list. You know, we get, of course, suggestions from our fans and we try to fulfill that all the time. That's one of Holly's favorite things is, oh, I didn't think about that. I want to do that this month. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she'll figure it out and find a way to do it and have fun there's with it. There's always new ideas. Yeah. Um, we just roll day by day and go, this because sounds fun. Of, <laughs> because of what we do and how involved we are with our fan base and subscribers that they're constantly feeding us ideas or paying us to do customs. You know, there's mm -hmm. always something going on that we don't even have to think about it at the end of the day. There's Were just... there any like recent ideas that a fan gave you that you guys did that really sticks out in your head? We're about mm -hmm. to do one. The mesh t-shirt. Oh the... yeah. The mesh shirt. She's got to oh. walk through is it five minutes? Yeah, he he wanted me to walk through a gas station with just like a mat, like a sheer mesh. She has a, a Vixen shirt that she has that is just as revealing it's as very, hell. Very, very sheer. Mm -hmm. It is um, definitely illegal to be in public in, but yeah. at a gas station she could pull it off. Yeah, and so I, I tried to do it like twice. There was a couple of, the first time I did it, there was a couple of um, We're going to do it here while we're out of town. Of the, um, <laughs> gas station that I was going to do it. I was like, no, I'm not, not in front of them. And then, um, of course, there was, it was the next time I went to go do it. There was like school was letting out. I'm oh, like, yeah. No, I can't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's kind of it's been like two weeks since he the guy ordered it, and I feel bad because it's been so long. But you really have to have the perfect time. I don't want to get in trouble, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't want to um, scare kids away or anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. You so. want to do it 
in a responsible way. Right. If that makes sense. And and in in Texas they have a, a law. You can be topless in an establishment as long as like you're not being sexual about it. Mm-hmm. So I think New York is the same thing. Yeah. You can be same topless thing. in the streets yeah. of New York. Yeah. As long as you're not sexualizing it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a shirt on. It's sheer, but, you know, there's time and place where you do things and where you don't do things. And, right. Yeah, I have to abide by those rules sometimes or all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so. do you, when you do that, like, do, do you like? The oh, attention. I, I love. I lo- I'm an exhibitionist, so okay. I love the public. I would. I would rather not have the shirt on. Yeah, you know. But he he wants the shirt on. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank it's you. been such a pleasure. Um, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you. Thanks That's for that? asking all the right questions. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. That was phenomenal. You're welcome. I barely looked at my beautiful cards. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they look so shiny and nice? They look great. <laughs> um, can you tell us where everybody can find you guys online? Sure. Um, at Holly Hot Wife, basically on everything. Um, my TikTok is Holly Hot Wife One. And what else? Oh, my Instagram is Holly Hot Wife Jones. Okay. I am uh, Instagram Vincent Jones. I'm sorry, J. Vincent Jones. I am OnlyFans at Vincent Jones. I am Twitter at Vincent Jones Triple X. And I am TikTok at Vincent Jones Media. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Go to hollylinks.com for access to all of my um, social media profiles. I've got I've got a lot. I've got a Reddit now. I have like a Telegram. I'm just like everywhere. It's exhausting. Um, and of course, if you want to support this podcast and watch these recordings live, um, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week.